that now and the ongoing rumbling tensions between the Jewish community and the Labour Party. Its leader, Jeremy Corbyn, broke his silence on the issue today. In an article for The Guardian newspaper, Mr Corbyn acknowledged the party had a real problem. But is it too little, too late for the Labour leader? Well, to discuss this, I'm joined by the commentator and founder of Campaign Against Anti-Semitism, Jonathan Sachidotti, and Jewish Labour supporter, who is also a supporter of Jeremy Corbyn, Barnaby Rain, welcome to you both. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Mr Sacha Dotti, to you first. It's been very passionate language from Jeremy Corbyn today in this article. He says, driving anti-Semitism out of the party for good and rebuilding trust with the Jewish community are his priorities. Your reaction to that? I don't think it was particularly passionate. It was more or less the same as the op-ed he wrote some time ago on the same subject. Parts of it, people have even said, looked like they were copied and pasted. In reality, actions speak louder than words. And Jeremy Corbyn has spent his uh, lifetime in politics uh, doing things which worried Jewish people. The reason that it wasn't in the news very much in the past is because he was an unimportant figure. It was a surprise to more or less everybody that he managed to take power in the Labour Party. Uh, but since he has done, and even in the run-up to that, Jewish people have been very concerned. And it is no exaggeration to say that many Jewish people now feel there's an existential crisis uh, in the Labour Party uh, for them because even if they are on the left or socialists themselves who may be attracted to his policies so many Jewish people don't feel they can vote for them not only because of his own uh, unsavory associations with uh, terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah that he called friends even referring to one terrorist who killed a woman just before her wedding and her father calling that person a brother uh, countless examples the slowness to deal with people like Ken Livingstone and the numerous times uh, he offended Jews in the Jewish community, Naz Shah, who he's just made the Shadow Equalities Minister, despite the fact that she admitted to posting anti-Semitic content on the internet. Uh, the list goes on and on from top to bottom. Jeremy Corbyn's not the only problem, but certainly as the leader of the Labour Party, he's made many people who fraternise with anti-Semites and who even are anti-Semites feel very comfortable in the party. Let me just bring in Barnaby Rain there. Uh, Mr Rain, uh, Mr Sachidotti's comments that actions speak louder than words. Your reaction to that? Does Jeremy Corbyn need to be doing more here? Yes, and that's why it's so good that he announced some pretty clear action uh, in this article that he wrote for The Guardian, and I look forward to see it, seeing it going uh, forward. He was clear that they're going to speed up disciplinary cases against people accused of anti-Semitism because those have lagged behind at an alarmingly slow rate. He was clear that he's going to uh, reopen consultation about Labour's code of conduct on anti-Semitism. He was clear that he's going to uh, roll out a programme of political education so that uh, people in the Labour Party know what anti-Semitism is and know how to deal with it. Uh, he was clear also that he wants to defend the security of Jewish schools and Jewish institutions, which is particularly important right now uh, because it doesn't get much coverage, but strictly Orthodox Jewish schools are under attack from Ofsted at the moment. Uh, from a prevent programme that Labour opposes. So he was clear about some of the action that Labour's going to take. We need to see it happening in individual cases. But I also think it's very important that we distinguish between two issues that are pervasively conflated here on both sides of this debate. And I'm tired of seeing Corbynites doing it and opponents of Jeremy Corbyn. And that's uh, issues around the Middle East and very strong disagreements that we have and the safety and security of Jews in Britain. Too often, when people make clearly anti-Semitic comments, and anti-Semitism is a real problem in the Labour Party, when they're called up on it, they'll just say, anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism, even though they're actually expressing anti-Semitic tropes about the Rothschilds or whatever. And too often, critics of Jeremy Corbyn uh, will attack his record in standing up for Palestinian human rights and for the Palestinian liberation struggle, uh, and will take that to be evidence of anti-Semitism. Uh, I think that conflation is damaging. Uh, we should start by acknowledging that anti-Semitism is a real problem, and whatever our disagreements about the politics of the Middle East, we should fight anti-Semitism here in Britain. Mr Sachidotti, I see you shaking your head there. Your reaction to that? Well, I've certainly not noticed anybody silencing criticism of Israel. There's plenty of criticism of Israel, whether it's on news programmes on Sky or elsewhere, whether it's in universities yeah, up and down the country. There's plenty of criticism of Israel. But what I did see, let me just read you a quick quote here. Uh, Dealing with Israel and racism has sometimes been used by those wanting to restrict criticism of Israel that is not anti-Semitic. Those words are from Jeremy Corbyn. In that op-ed, he put into the 
Guardian last night, just as the Jewish Sabbath was starting, uh, ensuring that most Jewish people wouldn't even be able to comment on it today uh, on the airwaves so that the news cycle might move on. The same thing he did, by the way, when he announced that the Chakrabarti inquiry would be taking place. He announced it late on a Friday night, and religious Jews and Jewish organisations will not work or even use electricity between sundown on a Friday and sundown on a Saturday. As a strategy, it's a particularly brutal one to try to silence Jewish voices, and he himself in that op-ed has accused some people who say that they are calling out conspiracy theories about Jews trying to control the Labour Party or British foreign policy. He said they've misused it. They're the ones trying to silence his no. anti-Israel views. I think that's utterly unacceptable, and I would like anyone, Barnaby included, to show me where Jewish people who are, who are talking about their concerns uh, about anti-Semitism anti in this country have either tried to stop or have been successful in stopping criticism of Israel, which is rife. In your view, Mr Sasha Dotti, what could Jeremy Corbyn do to satisfy critics such as yourself? He could get out of public life. He's made it very clear throughout his entire political career where he stands. It's no accident that Jeremy Corbyn has been revealed over recent weeks to have, throughout his career in the past, appeared on Press TV, the propaganda station of Iran, uh, which uh, believes uh, in a genocidal war against Israel, which kills homosexuals, all sorts of unsavoury things that we don't agree with in this country. It's no coincidence that he's called Hamas and Hezbollah friends that on a press TV programme he referred to that terrorist as a brother, uh, that he is found to have not just been on a platform, as he said, with somebody whose views he disagreed with on Holocaust comparisons to Israel, but to have actually hosted the event in the parliamentary estate. He booked the room, he hosted it, he introduced the event, and he knew what it was because it was part of a national tour. Jeremy Corbyn, throughout his political career and throughout his adult life, has made it very clear that one of the reasons he won't be accepting the full IHRA definition of anti Semitism is because it more or less totally describes his own worldview and his own position on Israel and Jews, and to do so would be to admit himself that he's an anti Semite. I would say, in my opinion, Jeremy Corbyn is an anti Semite and has proven it with his behaviour throughout his career, and there's nothing he can do to make this better personally. Barnaby Rain, let me just bring you in. Uh, Mr. Sachadotti mentioned this existential threat that some members of the Jewish community say la the Labour Party presents to them now. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn disputes this and calls it overheated rhetoric. Uh, your view, please, on that. Well, there you have it. We were just told by Mr. Sacerdotti that the only thing Jeremy Corbyn can do to stop this row is to get out of British public life. I'm concerned about fighting anti-Semitism in the Labour Party and everywhere in British society. That means I want to root out the conspiracy theorists, the nut jobs, all the people who really believe that there's a Jewish lobby uh, that has to be uh, done away with. Uh, I know that Jeremy Corbyn wants to do that because he's made it very, very clear publicly uh, and, and action's going to follow. Uh, that's not good enough when for Mr. Sacerdotti. After well, two years? That's not, after that's two not years good enough. No, no. When are they going to follow? When, what no. has been stopping him doing it for the last two years of this controversy. I absolutely agree with him you. doing it in all those events which he hosted. I, I where absolutely those agree that he's been too were put slow. Out there. Let me, let, me, let me reply. I absolutely agree with you that it's been too slow to respond and that's why he's apologised. But they've set out some very clear action that's going to follow now. But you just, I think, uh, uh, made clear that your agenda here is not simply about uh, uh, tackling anti-Semitism. That's my agenda and I think that's the agenda of most of those, including most Jews, who are complaining about anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. You also simply want to get rid of Jeremy Corbyn. Now, we can have respectable political disagreements, but I think that we need to fight anti-Semitism uh, in the Labour Party uh, and, and I don't think that that uh, uh, we, should, we should use it to well, express our prior political say, disagreements when, with Jeremy Corbyn. When's and I certainly don't think he's an anti-Semite, by the way. And I think there's a real problem here. There's a, been a presupposition in this debate that Labour's always been an anti-racist party and only now it's crawling with racists. I think there are lots of anti-Semites in the Labour Party and they have to be cleared out. I grew up... Well, at least we uh, agree on that. Uh, uh, we just we don't agree over who they all are. We, abs no, is, we absolutely agree on that. But absolutely nothing I grew wrong up. with wanting to, get, wanting to get rid of Jeremy Corbyn from public life. When people accused Zach Goldsmith, when he was running to be the Mayor of yeah. London, of Islamophobia and uh, b dog whistle politics about uh, anti-Islam sentiment. Uh, quite rightly, plenty of people did weaponize that to try to yeah. get him out of the running. There's nothing wrong with so-called weaponizing of Jeremy Corbyn's own tolerance for anti-Semites and his own facilitation. But it's of not tolerance. But this is the problem. Holocaust but, deniers but, like, but the like problem Stephen is Sizer. the claim that it's he's, tolerance. He's done it throughout his career. The it's problem too is the claim that it's tolerance. After two years of this being in the news, to I, suddenly listen. say he's about to act on it. Why do you believe he's going to act on it now? 
listen, I'm, I'm young. I grew up under a Labour government, under Blair and Brown, and I remember seeing Labour ministers uh, try to tell Muslim women how they should dress, as Jack Straw did, or try to suggest we should deprive refugees of council houses, as Margaret Hodge did. And in those days, you didn't have Labour leaders coming out clearly condemning the dog whistles to bigotry. The big difference now is that Jeremy Corbyn's not only condemning the dog whistles, he's also in this article clearly condemning those who don't believe that it's a problem. Labour's always had racism he's in its one ranks, of them. And the Corbynites are wrong to deny some of them that anti-Semitism still exists in Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party. It absolutely does. It's been a bigotry that goes back millennia, and it's still there. We have and to fight it. He's made clear so that he wants to fight his Labour Party. So let's be why do you think it's so comfortable? It. Why do you Mr. think Mr. Sachidotti, just so a final thought from you before we go. In your opinion, uh, could, will the Labour Party regain the trust from some members of the Jewish community while Jeremy Corbyn is still leader? Well, maybe it will. You know, the Jewish community isn't this sort of homogenous group that acts in one way. You can see you've managed to get two guests on, on Shabbat, the Jewish Sabbath, both of them Jewish, in the studio arguing. It's also telling that the Labour Party isn't sending out any front bench ministers uh, to do its bidding. It's sending out uh, your other guest there, as instead of actually any official from the Labour Party. They send them out on Channel 4 News as well, who were honest enough to say that they tried to get a Labour official and couldn't do. Uh, simply put, Jeremy Corbyn's strategy here has been to drop this article on a Friday night saying more or less what he said in the past. Uh, it will result in no particular changes that will make anyone feel better about this, and nor, nor should they feel better about it. And instead of actually having, uh, the, the, instead of having the courage to stand up and defend these reprehensible positions that he's taken in the past and been alongside people with those uh, opinions in the past, he sent out two Jews to argue about this on the Jewish Sabbath on Sky News in order to make it look like the Jewish community is divided. The Jewish community isn't homogenous, but certainly your other guests' perspective is a very fringe one. At the moment, there is extraordinary unity among most of the Jewish community who are extremely worried about the prospect of Jeremy Corbyn being a prime minister for their future in the country. And if some of those people, myself included, think that the only way to deal with that is to get rid of Mr Corbyn from public life and the top of the Labour Party, that shouldn't be held against us. If we believe there's okay. a man there who's dangerous for Jews, we should have every right to say that and alert the rest of the country to this kind of racism in the party. OK, and Barnaby Rain, a quick thought from you before we go. Uh, can Jeremy Corbyn shake off this crisis? Lord Prescott writing in the Mirror says that they need to sort it out ahead of a potential Tory government collapse in the autumn. Yes, let's clear up a myth here. The myth is that anti-Semitism is either new or it's unique to the Labour Party or it doesn't really exist at all and it's just a smear spread by some Jewish lobby. The evidence is very, very clear. Anti-Semitism is still pervasive across British political life. It's there in the Labour Party, it's there in the Tory Party, and there's an online cesspit in which it flourishes in the Labour Party. It has to be called out, it has to be challenged, and those of us who agree or disagree with the politics of Jeremy Corbyn on Palestine or on any other issue should be able to agree about one thing, which is we need to call out anti anti-Semitism when we find it, we need to punish those who have anti-Semitic attitudes, and we need to roll out a programme of political education to say there is a very noble tradition on the left, which is about building a society in which every single human being can flourish and can live a life of dignity. Anti-Semitism is completely opposed to that sort of programme. It's a racism, and that's why it has no place on the left, and we have to get rid of it. Barnaby Rain, Jonathan Sacerdotti, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.